Hi everyone, Aiden here with the trailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Yakima Exosystem and seeing how it fits on the back of our 2022 Toyota Tundra. Now this is going to be a modular hitch system and what I mean by that is it's going to slide into our hitch just like any normal accessory would but all the other accessories like this box and the ski carrier on top are going to be completely modular. So we're looking at this current configuration today, seeing how it fits on the Tundra and what you can do with it. But just know that all these accessories can be swapped out. If we decide in the summertime that we wanna take the ski carrier off and put a bike rack on top, we can do that. Or if we wanna decide that maybe this box isn't quite working out, we wanna swap out to a basket instead so we have the open top, we can do that too. Everything's gonna work, you can get everything key to like and swap it out to fit your needs depending on what you're doing. Let's check it out. Now, before I see what the carrier can do, I wanna make sure it's gonna work well with my vehicle. And for the Tundra, I think the biggest thing I would be worried about is if I can still use my bed. Obviously, that's the biggest cargo space we have in the vehicle. And the exosystem actually swings away. So there's a hand knob at the very back of the carrier, which is pretty easy to reach. I'm trying to leave some extra room so the camera can see over my shoulder here, but even without that, I can still reach it just fine and get this pin right next to the hand knob to swing the whole carrier away. It'll lock out at 90 degrees and secure with this pin at the corner, allowing us to open up the tailgate and get full access to the bed of our truck. So if we need to have anything back here for storage and we need access to it, we can get it or maybe you just need a place to sit, maybe have a meal, maybe we're at a campsite, and we just need a place to sit down, maybe have some places to set some things. We can do that. The swing away clears perfectly fine with the tailgate. And with that, you can also see that this top shelf here can actually get swung around because we want access to the box. There's a pin with a lock and a hand knob on that top shelf to unlock the swinging feature. This will bring the ski carrier around a whole 180 degrees. We can still get to that if we need it. But the big thing here now is we have access to the box. So we can do this, unlock it and open it up, get to all of our cargo in here as well. So if we wanna get this all set up, maybe at our campsite and leave it out for however long we're staying, we can. I would recommend using the included kickstand just to support the weight of all this because when it's swung out, it's kind of at an odd angle and puts a lot of pressure on your hitch, but that stand does help support it. So if you wanna leave it out like this for a long period of time, you can do that really safely. Getting things back to the driving position is just the same process, but in the reverse order. We'll pull the pin at the corner to release the arm and bring it back in towards the truck. We can push that pin back in and then re-secure that hand knob to make sure that that swing away arm doesn't go anywhere and stays nice and solid when we're driving down the road. As far as this kit goes, let's start talking about these accessories. First up is that ski carrier. Now this is very similar to Yakma's Fat Cat system. If you're familiar with that, you've got these large oversized buttons to open up these spring loaded arms with the thick rubber pads in between to help cushion and grip your gear inside. And they've got multiple ratcheting points to get a good strong hold on the skis or snowboard that you have inside. Now with this, some limitations you can see with our skis, we don't have them stacked on top of each other because the spacing here just didn't work out for our bindings. So I do wanna give you some measurements there from inside edge to inside edge of the carrier. Between the two of them, it's going to be 17 and three quarters of an inch that's from here to here. That'll help you know if you have the same sort of issues we had with our binding spacing, because it'd be nice if we could just put those directly centered between the arms, but we just couldn't. And then from center to center, that's going to be about 21 inches. And that's again, from the center of one carrier to the other. The other thing to consider is your usable space. From the inside edge to the inside edge on that ski carrier, it's gonna be 25 inches. You can kind of lay out your stuff at home and see what's gonna fit. As for the box underneath, it's going to have 10 cubic feet of space. And you saw inside earlier, it's a pretty spacious box. The rectangular shape is gonna lend it pretty well to most cargo. Even some boxier suitcases should fit well in there, so long as it's within the 100 pound weight capacity. 
The nice thing about carrying your skis in something like this is how low to the ground it is. This style of carrier is really common for roof racks, but obviously your Tundra is a pretty tall vehicle. So having it all down here where it's accessible definitely makes loading and unloading a lot easier. As far as how it sits on the Tundra, it's obviously going to add some length to the vehicle. So coming from the back of the bumper to the end of the carrier, it's actually gonna be right here at the skis where it's the furthest out point, coming in right around 36 inches. So it does add a bit of length. That's just something to keep in mind when you're driving around with it. But for how much stuff you can carry in here, I'd say that's not too bad. On the ground clearance side of things, we are gonna get an impressive 21 inches of clearance to the bottom of the carrier right here. I don't think we should have to worry about that when we're driving around, so just keep that in mind too. At the back end of the carrier, we can see that the closest point to the tailgate is probably right here. That's got about four inches of space, but luckily there's not a whole lot of room for movement here. I'm not worried about making vehicle contact. Just keep in mind when you're putting it in the hitch, if you slide it in a little too far, there's maybe a little bit more room for contact, but I don't think that should be too much of an issue. Some other things to think about that aren't so number-based are gonna be the clearance with things like our taillights. You can see the box sits within our taillights pretty well here, and even if we have some longer skis or snowboards, those items are pretty thin, and I don't see it blocking your taillights or that being an issue, so that's great. One thing I will point out is that with your backup camera here, although there's a pretty big opening right here, the backup camera does kind of point down a bit, so the bulky box probably will get in the way of that just a little bit, and especially when you have this loaded up with skis and snowboards, you're probably not gonna get good visibility out of that. But everything does sit pretty much below your tailgate, so your back window is going to be perfectly usable if you've got this configuration set up, as opposed to something like a bike rack up top. Your license plate back here is not going to be visible though. The box does get in the way quite a bit, so that's just something to keep in mind. If you're driving through a state that does require it be visible, they do offer a license plate bracket that will attach here, and you can move your license plate out to the outside so it is visible. That is something I'd recommend picking up just for that peace of mind and knowing that no matter what state you're driving through, you are going to be operating by their local laws, but be sure to just check that before your trips. Like I've mentioned a couple times before, this is a modular system. So all of these accessories can be swapped out really easily. Coming into the arms, we're gonna have a couple things to look at. This pin here, we'll switch it from the locked position to the swapping position. This is unlocked, so we can start turning that hand knob in the swapping position to open up the jaws, and we can just lift the accessory out and swap it out. So let's say it's getting to winter time and we're ready to attach the ski carrier. We can take it, drop it into the tracks, tighten it up. That will grab onto that base that we saw when I had it out, keep it from popping up, flip it over to that lock position and then lock up the hand knob. So whatever accessory you do have, the ski carrier is a little bit different because it is two separate pieces. Let's say you had the bike rack or the basket it would just have both of those dropping in at the same time and tightening with the hand knobs at the same time. It's a really quick and easy system, and it's nice that it's tool free, so you don't need to break out any tools just to swap out the accessories. All around the carrier, you're gonna have a variety of different locking points. We've got that pin that we saw earlier to rotate the top shelf. All of the hand knobs have keys as well. The box has its own key, and then the hitch has its own key. So pretty much everything locks. The one thing that doesn't is the ski carrier, although they do have spots on the outside handles there where we can add in a lock core to make sure that everything locks. But just know that when you're ordering this kit, everything that can lock will be key to like. If you choose to add other accessories down the road, like a bike rack, its keys may not be key to like, but you can swap out those lock cores to match your existing system. Down at our hitch, it's working with our two inch by two inch receiver tube and that locking anti-rattle bolt keeps things nice and solid in the hitch with no shake or play in there. Right next to the hand knob we checked out earlier, you can probably see the four pole wiring right here. That's for Yakima's extra light kit if you wanna add that on. Like I mentioned before, this doesn't necessarily block your taillights, but if you want them to be more visible, it has that wiring pass-through built right into the carrier 
and it's right next to the four pole on our truck. So it's very easy to just plug it in there and plug in the light kit on the outside. And with all that in mind, I think it's gonna be a really solid fit on our Tundra. The enclosed box is obviously nice just for storing some things and having it under lock and key. If you don't have a title cover and you wanna keep some stuff locked up and safe, this is a great way to do it because you may not have space inside the cab of the truck. And then as for the ski carrier here, I like this method of carrying skis and snowboards because it's very low profile and easy to do. The fact that it's now so low to the ground and easy to access, and we don't have to worry about having a roof rack and all that extra height, I think that's really nice too. Then with the added bonus of this whole system being completely modular, it can grow with us and expand to fit our needs, whether it be a camp kitchen or another box, we can do that. Overall, the exosystems are really solid fit on the Toyota Tundra here. And I think it's going to be a really versatile way to expand the functionality of your hitch. Thanks for watching.